everybody, here's Christian from Team Orcast, and we're here uh, with another video explaining a little bit how we record our stuff and this time around we talk again about how to record uh, card games, board games, magic, netrunner, whatever. We focus of course on netrunner and we have a little bit of experience with that and we want to share this experience with you. So in this video I want to talk a little bit about setting up your stuff, what kind of, what kind of hardware do you need to set up um, your camera on location if you already decided and you have the camera you want to you know start recording what do you do and the most important part of this video is going to be talking about tripods which is a bit of a new topic in itself I had a lot of troubles with that finding the right tripod solution to record our Netrunner videos I went through different setups and I wanted to show you what I found out what is basically my setup today there's basically three schools of thought here uh, you can uh, use a tripod, like a very, very large tripod, set it up next to the table uh, and basically film the table from next to the table. Uh, but that will require, uh, require a very, very, very high tripod. Another solution is to take a smaller tripod and just basically set it up on the table next to the board game or card game that you're recording, which of course has the disadvantage that you're taking away space on the table. And the third solution is to use some kind of attachment to attach the camera to the table itself. I'm going to a lot of tournaments and they're very very crowded. There's a lot of people playing at the same time. There is no table real estate to speak of. Usually when you play a game on the same table next to you somebody else is playing and of course you can't like get out your tripod and set it up in their face. You kind of, uh, I was looking for something that is more compact. As for with a tripod setting it up like next to the table, first of all, I don't have such a large tripod anyway, so I would have to buy one. And second of all, I was kind of um, concerned that the tripod would get in the way. Again, crowded tournaments, people are running all over the place. Maybe somebody bumps into the tripod and then, you know, moves the camera, you know, the camera points into the into weird direction. I have to reset everything. That can be a very chaotic thing, especially if you're playing yourself. I was looking Looking for a solution where it just you know set it all up press play and focus on the game however this is not a typical setup for a camera which I found out very quickly and it's kind of difficult to get the right kind of equipment to do that so in hindsight maybe just getting a small tripod would have been so much easier anyway here's the first solution I had so this is something you can get very cheaply on eBay and it seems like a good solution it's kind of like a flexible arm as you can tell there's a tripod mount on the one, one end and there is like a clamp which you can get on onto the table. It's flexible, so you can like set it up the way you want, uh, but still kind of firm, seems kind of firm. So that was kind of like my solution for the, for this issue here. However, I soon realized there is a slight problem with that, and that's the fact that the tables are often shaking. People are playing the, on those tables. The tables are often, you know, not the best quality tables. So if you have a mount like this, which is kind of like flexible, and of course the clamp is also spring loaded, you will get a lot of vibrations into it. And even with a small camera like the GoPro, which doesn't weigh a lot, I was getting a lot of vibrations on it. And it's really difficult to get this kind of shaking out of the footage. It's really distracting. And I had just biggest headaches early on with this kind of setup. So I was looking into more esoteric solutions for this kind of problem. And I found this thing here, which is a Velbond HC2528. You can basically use this to clamp it on a table and then you basically just slide in like a like a pole here inside and at the, at the end there's the camera so we can just attach it to a table. The nice thing about this solution is that it's very very firm, very stable, there's hardly any any kind of vibrations going on and it basically solves the entire problem. I'm very happy with the solution, it took me a while to find this out and it might be difficult to get this kind of specific, specific accessory but I assure you it's well worth uh, investing the time to find it. One thing I would warn you about is that because you are clamped to the table, you cannot control the distance that your camera is from the, the stuff you're recording. So uh, this only really works if you're using a camera with a very wide lens. Something like a GoPro is perfect for this. Something that's a bit of a problem if you order this clamp, it doesn't actually come with a center column. You have to get a center column yourself. And it's really, really difficult to get that uh, high of a center column. I mean, the, the one I'm using here right now is uh, it's 60, no, it's 55 centimeters. So it's that's that's a perfect length for me. Uh, but it's actually not a professional center column for a, for a tripod. It's basically an aluminum pipe I just bought at at a store and just cut it to length. And then I just use like a washer and like a, a glue in mount for the GoPro and some additional glue on the side here to just build myself my own 
a tripod center column because if you buy the center columns at a professional store you easily pay like 100 bucks for what is basically just five bucks investment in hindsight something that might also work quite nice is one of those um, there's selfie poles they usually have like a regular tripod attachment here and you can use it an adapter for a gopro or you can use it for a normal camera as well they're telescoping and they're really nice and actually quite stable i don't know how how much vibrations they will take during a recording but this might be a simpler and even cheaper solution you can get them very cheaply they're sold everywhere i talked uh, with some people on the forum about this problem once and somebody recommended in hindsight to maybe also use a microphone stand and use like a gopro if you're using a gopro like a gopro adapter on the end of the microphone stand this might be actually a good solution for this kind of stuff because they are incredibly long and very, very flexible very cheap as well much cheaper than photography equipment so uh, this might be also a uh, solution to look into. And again, often the simplest solution is to basically just get a regular tripod, photography tripod. The numbers you're looking for is basically 55 centimeters uh, if you're putting it on a, on a table and around 130 centimeters if you are uh, putting it next on a ground next to the table. Another thing is something I talked about in the other video, which is um, getting one of those power banks Again, you can get them everywhere. This is a 5000 milliampere hours power bank. It basically, you know, you just plug in it in and it just charges like off the wall socket through USB. So this is a huge advantage if your camera can be powered uh, by USB. If not, there is still, uh, it may be still worth looking for a solution with a power bank. There's a lot of power banks that have different kinds of outputs. It's not just convenience, it's just, you know, the flexibility you have by not being dependent on a power socket. You can set up your camera everywhere you want, uh, where it is the best lighting. That also will improve your quality in a long time. And of course, uh, the extra convenience will just unburden you and make you focus on other things. And I can't stress enough how horribly, horribly uh, disappointing it is when you're recording a really really great match and in the middle of the match the camera cuts out because the battery ran out or something that's just so gut-wrenching another aspect i want to talk about is glare there's always this problem when you're recording card games where people sleeve their cards it's very often that you get like reflections on those sleeves and you can't see what kind of card is being played and that's always really awkward uh, for people to watch um, so to avoid this kind of glare there's solutions for this and some people recommend using one of those which is a polarizer filter you can stick it onto the camera like this and it basically will polarize the light basically the idea is that the polarizer will remove the glare from the cards uh, will basically filter out the light that is being reflected from the card and i thought that was great so i bought one of those and i was severely disappointed it actually didn't work so well then that has to do with the angle that you're recording at at a very oblique angle a very shallow angle you uh, you can filter out those reflections but the kind of angle that you usually record those um those card games at is very basically from the top very very often from the top and uh, these kinds of reflections are not covered by the polarizer filter, at least from the, the one I bought. Maybe there are some more expensive ones or maybe some special ones that I haven't heard about that can be used. If you have good solutions for this, certainly post it on the comment sections. Uh, but otherwise, I would just wouldn't worry about the polarizer filter. I think there's much easier solutions to deal with reflections. Which uh, brings me to the uh, question of light and placement, something that's very, very important and something that you should really, really put a lot of thought into it. There's basically two things that uh, need to be considered when placing your camera uh, and recording at a venue uh, or at home I guess as well which is one of them is to make sure there's sufficient light there's always a lot of light and if you have a lot of light coming in you will get really really great quality especially on, on, on small cameras like a GoPro or like a cell phone so one thing I always look uh, for when I'm coming into a venue and recording there is always to maybe look for a window because that's basically the best source of light you can get uh, a lot of um, things that we recorded at Würfelkiste in Aachen or at the German Nationals they were basically directly next to a window and that's why where we got the best possible quality uh, for our recording however this has one disadvantage and that you know throughout the day the light will fade and change in the evening there is less light coming in so the light situation will change so you have to evaluate re-evaluate your lightning conditions maybe from round to round if you depend on light coming from outside artificial light is fine too but again that's something you have to experiment with if you so if you're recording on a tournament maybe it's worth coming a little bit earlier set up your cameras try different locations see where uh, things look better or worse just to pick the best spot.
However, one thing to consider is also that there might be reflections. So depending on where your camera is set up, uh, so the cards will catch reflections from the light surrounding it. And that's of course, again, very, very nasty. Polarizer filters don't work. So just make sure you pick a nice spot where there is little reflections going on. A very easy solution to do this is basically make sure that the light is coming from behind the camera. So for example, when I'm recording next to a window, I like to place the camera facing away from the window so that the cards don't catch the reflections of the window itself. After some time, you get get an eye for this and you can, kind of can figure out where the reflections are likely to going to be. But the, I think the easiest way is still just running around the, the place, coming a little bit earlier, setting your camera, putting the cards on the table before you start to see if there is any kind of problems with the reflections. And finally, some words about the little things. Always make sure, for example, Netrunner, the, we use a lot of tokens. Always make sure the tokens are laid out on the table so it's very easy afterwards to read what's going on. It's also worthwhile. It's like a lot of people playing card games have like the this habit when they play a card they play a card directly into the archives this card pile and not put it out on the table so um, if you, later on if you're watching this it might be difficult to uh, see if the card is being played or if it's being discarded so make sure maybe to explain to the players that you record the recording that they should act out all of the uh, game states that they're doing also in Netrunner it's worth uh, using something like click tokens and of course the always very popular karate chop to indicate where you're running on. And I mean, the very basic thing is to actually use play mats. Uh, for Netrunner, they're quite common, but some people don't use them. And the thing with play mats is that they allow you to make sure that players, every card the, um, the players play will stay within the boundaries of what the camera can record. And of course, maybe it goes without saying, but when you're going to the to a tournament and you meet strangers and you shove a camera in their face, you'd always be polite about this. Always explain what you're going to do and ask them politely if you're allowed to record them actually, because you know some people are, don't want to be exposed to, to the scrutiny of the internet. And I can certainly understand that. And you should be, of course, understanding if they don't want you to record their stuff. So of course, you know, looking for this kind of placement and setting up your stuff and looking for power plugs, that of course, always requires a cooperation from the venue owner. So if you're recording a tournament, it's very, very important to uh, actually contact the venue owner in advance, ask them if you're allowed to set up your stuff in their venue. So there's a lot of things that venue owners can help you with, uh, let you on early perhaps, uh, let you set up your stuff before everybody else does. Maybe some venue owners will give you like a special dedicated video recording table, which is really, really nice. So reach out to the venue owners, be polite, be very open about this because they can help you quite a bit so this is it about the recording. Uh, if you have any other tips, if you have recorded your own board games and card games and you have other tips on how to record this stuff, certainly post them in the comment section and share them with us. Otherwise, our next video is probably going to be about post-processing, how to process the raw material you get from those cameras and how to make sure you get the best possible quality. Until then, hack the planet.